Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Agnes, for this beautiful prayer. Today, here we are, the first um, weekend of, uh, or Saturday of February, right? Um, and I say this because it's no longer Happy New Year. Now it's old. <laughs> All the good stuff that we promised ourselves better be in place now, right? February. So there's no such a thing of Happy New Year anymore. So, um, but it's good to be here. It's good to be with all of you. And uh, Daniel will be talking about the impact of Spiritist teachings. We like to, um, I like to joke about it because um, he may not like that much, but, you know, these are the days that I'm so happy that we get him out of behind the camera, right? It's like, come on, Daniel, get out of behind the camera. He's always back there. But I say this, not only to make fun of it, it's, it's nice to, to have fun about these things as well. But because he's always stuck back there in, you know, working hard to make sure that everything's perfect, nothing is tilted, you know, in terms of the screen or the sound is good and everything because he has that touch of we have to make sure that, you know, it's working well. And that's a good thing because as we heard our dear friend Agnes saying, hopefully our brothers and sisters who will be watching this thing as well, this video through the web, will also be enlightened, right? So the... Um, perhaps we don't have a huge place physically, but the streaming of these videos uh, for sure goes uh, in every corner of the world. We do have a follower from, as you guys have seen, I'm, I know I'm taking a long time here, but we ha as we have seen um, from Australia and others from all over the world as well. So it does touch the hearts of others. So on that note, Daniel, thank you. And thank you for sharing this beautiful topic uh, with us today, the impact of spiritist teachings. Um, Daniel, it's on you. Get out of there. Thank you, Leo. Wow. Full house. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Um, as Leo has just mentioned, is not my preferable place to be. I like to be at the back. But um, when the work is called to share the knowledge, so you need to be prepared, right? So when I was thinking about what we can reflect today, the first thing that came to my mind was, let's go to the basis. Let's go to the beginning, why we are here, why we come to this place, what this place has to offer to us. So I thought, okay, let us go back to the beginning and discuss about spiritism, about the spiritist teachings. What is this teachings has to do with our lives? And how, by learning about the teaching that the spirits has brought to us, can impact our life. So, but uh, it's always important for us to understand how everything starts, right? Because we, we don't follow things that we don't know. Right? We follow things that make sense, and also we have some return to our life. So the idea today is for us to dive in, do like a revisit. Most of you know the history of spiritism, but every time we come here to talk about this teaching, we are talking for two audiences. One that is in the physical body, us, and the other that is that doesn't have the physical body, right? Is in the spiritual, the spiritual plane that are here with us, right? So that they are the one that inspire us, but sometimes we have those that is not so inspirational. Let's say, let's say this way, right? So the first question is, what is spiritism? Since we are talking about the spiritist teachings, or the spirits teachings, so is, is spiritism something that has ever always happened throughout humanity? The word spirit is not necessary. The phenomenon, the phenomenon, yes. So when the movement of the turning table happens here in New York, upstate New York with the Fox sister in the mid 1848, um, so this became a big boom here in the U.S., right? So everybody was doing uh, science, science, as we call mediumship 
meetings today and um, became entertainment. So this traveled to Europe. So many of you know people used to get together to communicate with the spirits. The phenomenon of the, t the turning tables became like a entertainment, right? People used to go to theaters just to see the phenomenon happen. But then one person, one educator called Hippolyte Leon Denivar Rivail decide to investigate the phenomenon, right? And we all have watched, at least us here, watched the movie Kardec that talk about the beginning of this um, investigation. So spirituals start with a investigation process. So someone that look at the phenomenon and ask the question, what is behind of these answers that he, this, the, that time he doesn't know that was spirit was giving. There is the famous phrase that even was put in the movie is that when he saw the phenomenon happen, like when people ask question and the table knocks and make noise and then they put the letters together and it has the answer yes or no. So the first thing he, 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 um, he thought about, well, there is something there that is intelligent. Or I have to believe that a table has a brain, right? That was uh, the famous uh, conclusion that he had in that time. So he decided to investigate, go to those meetings with like, you know, questions. And from that point, he spent almost one year doing those type of investigations. This is for, from uh, 1855, when a friend of him invited him to go to those meetings until like middle of 1856. So almost a year he was observing those and asked some questions. So the difference between what Kardec did and other people was doing is that he took that so serious that he decided to ask serious questions, not like trivial questions like, okay, so who, you know, especially for the, the, the singles, who, who I'm gonna marry? I'm gonna, you know, make money, something like this, more material things. So he started to ask questions that was philosophical questions. And from that point, he started to compile those questions, right? So after one year, he was like, okay, I have a lot of material here with me. What should I do? Was then that a spirit, one of his mentors approached him was the spirit of truth, said, well, now it's time for you to expose yourself. You need to put this together. You can't keep those information for yourself. That's why when he thought about, and this information that I'm gonna bring here is in the introduction of the first book, the Spirit's book, where he described almost a hundred page, uh, how was the process, the methodology that he used to put these books together. So the first thing is like that he came to his mind was this teaching doesn't belong to him. That's very important, right? The teaching does not belong to Kardec. He was only the um, investigator or the um, research of those phenomena. So then he was put in that situation that, okay, so how do I present this teaching to the public? And that's when um, he think about what the whole information he has in hand, and he decided to put the spiritist teachings or spiritism. And in the introduction, he said for new ideas, new words are necessary. And he mentioned um, to ensure the exactness of the expression. So spiritism was created by Allan Kardec. It was a terminology created by Allan Kardec. So if today you read, I don't know, Bible, for example, and you see the word spiritism there, was not a word that was introduced when the Bible was written because Kardec was the one that created this, this um, expression, spiritism. And then he mentioned, so I just uh, took um, a part of this, uh, the, the introduction of the Spirit's book where he described why he decided to name spiritism. And he says, the word spiritual, spiritualist, and the spiritualism always have a well-defined meaning 
to give them a new one in order to apply them to the spirit's doctrine would be to multiply the the awareness the already numerous causes of ambiguity let us think he doesn't want to to create more one you know religion or one philosophy that was pure like spiritual spiritualist right strictly speaking spiritualism is the opposite of materialism and everyone who believes there is something within them that is more the matter are spiritualist spiritualists right however it does not necessarily follow that they must therefore believe in the existence of spirits or in the communications with the invisible world so what we, we, we are trying to say is like this everybody that believes that there is something beyond the physical body matter are uh, spiritualists but not necessarily they believe in communication of spirit in the acquisition of spirit right so in that way all religions that believe that there is something um that uh, transcend the the physical the life in the physical body are spiritualists right by the definition so then he finalized by saying therefore instead of the word spiritual or spiritualism for the uh, for des designating these latter beliefs we have employed the word spiritist or spiritism and the spiritism spiritist those that follow or study spiritism so we can say that um by being spiritualist doesn't mean that you are a spiritist but a spiritism is, a, is under the umbrella of spiritualism right so this is this is in the introduction of the spirit's book is the first um 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 the first the second paragraph so kardec start this doctrine this um teachings by defining what it is right and pretty much he's just saying that he's a spiritualist philosophy but there is element in this spiritualist philosophy that not always spiritualist people believe or follow right clear right <clears throat> Then, in the book, What is Spiritism, that Kardec wrote later, is a booklet, not a booklet, but a small book compared to the Spirit's book. So there are more examples and more, Kardec go more deep in the explanation of what is the Spirit's teachings. There's great example for there. Uh, we have been studying this book here at the center before. We are planning to revisit the book because for, it's always good to go back to the basis so we cannot lose track, right? <laughs> so there is this definition that Kardec puts over there. Spiritism is the science that deal with nature, the origin and the destiny of spirit, as well as their relationship with the corporeal world. So the object of study here is what? For example, what is the object of study of biology, for example? is what organic life right what's the object of study of astronomers like stars universe is what so what's the science that said that astronomy right so what is the object of study of neuroscience for example the brain right so what is the object of study of spiritism is the spirit so when we talk about spiritism, we talk about the objective says is a spirit and the nature, the uh, origin and the relationship that the spirit has with the corporeal world, right? We can go a little bit further and define spiritism as the same time a science of observation and a philosophical doctrine. It is also a religion as of its moral consequences. So when we say signs of observation, we are not talking about uh, go to the lab and investigate. Let me see what is the spirit in this bacteria, in this virus, right? Let me mix this. That's not the observation of 
study of spiritism is the spirit. So in that case, what we observe is the, this interaction that the spirit has with the corporeal. And a good example of this is our mediumist meeting that we have here. Hey, Rob, how are you? So that is, that is one of the things that we do. Also, we observe how the spirit influences our lives, right? So the other type of observation is how we change as we learn, as we put this in practice. So it's an observation, right? So all this is in the realm of spiritism. So we could say, like summarize, that spiritism has these three aspects, philosophy, religion, and science. The religion component is very important for us to understand because nobody will come to you and say, hey, you should not say that spiritism is not a religion. But you also can say that spiritism for you is not a religion, right? So there is no one that will, there is no like a hierarchy. There is no one that will come to you and say, hey, this is not, you know, this is not what spirit is, the spirit doctrine says, right? So you take your conclusion based in how you interpret the, the teaching. So the religion here is, is as we, we define here, has to do with our moral transformation. It's not, with the, um, the, the, the dogma or the tradition or, 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 or ritual is not related to that. So the religion here is purely related to how you behave, how you, um, how you um, deal with your relationship with others, pretty much like this. Science is the part of observation that you observe the phenomenon. So you can study that, you know. Um, and the spiritism is based in study. Um, the phenomena is important, but it's not the main thing that, um, especially in the spirit center, we, we put as a priority. We have our indigenous meeting, but the study is the foundation of these teachings, because through the study will help us to know ourselves and um, do some proposal to change our behavior, right? To become a better person. So this idea, they are not, they didn't start with Kardec, right? Kardec was the editor in chief. He is pretty much got all this information through his research, put together, published the first book that the, is the, the Spirit's book, is the backbone of these teachings. The other one we're gonna see uh, pretty soon came from the first book, right? Spirit's book is the backbone. Spirit book contain the spiritist doctrine, contain spiritism. The other ones, the mediums book, the gospel, the heaven, hell, and the, gen the genus, is a extension of the information we find in the spirit's book. From these five books, we have now, I would say thousands of other books that, that came about, that follow the pattern the pattern, extend, progress from the, the, the beginning, from the foundation. This is the foundation. So when we look at this teaching, we see that this idea pre are present throughout human history. Where, Daniel? So if we look at like, for example, the ancient Greek, Egyptians and Homer, the Romans, they, they, there is a lot of information that they believe that there is another dimensions, right? So if you study Socrates, if we study Plato, Pla Plato, Plato, Aristoteles, they always um, question the existence of a different dimension, right? Socrates in particular, he used to say that he has an invisible friend, right? So he, he, he used to say that he has an invisible friend where that he used to talk with this in invisible friend. Moses, for example, he talked to Java, right? He has this straight communication of Java, right? So he brought the Ten Commandments. He wrote a lot of those um, 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 information, the five books, the Pentateuch, the five, the first five books from from the Bible, from the Old Testament, pretty much inspired by the creator that he called Java, right? So this is a, a, a example of this type of interaction with a reality that's not physical, right? 
Jesus, for example, when he are in the, the, the transfiguration process where he um, had that moment where he, he interact with um, Moses and Elijah. So this is a, a, a spiritual phenomenon, spiritual phenomenon that um, happens before Kardec starts to investigate about the, you know, the, the, the manifestation of spirits. So here in the US, there is this gentleman, Andrew Jackson Davis. He is very interesting. Uh, there is documentary, there is books. He wrote 30 books about the spiritual realm, 30. And he is considered one of the forerunner of the new spiritualism here in America. So he lived the same time of the Fox system. Some spiritualists, they used to say that Andrew Dexter Dave was, was even more important than the Fox sisters. The Fox sister was the one that sh they were used, they are the channel for reveal the presence of spirit in a more ostensible way that became big here in the US, went to Europe, and Kardec was the one that decided to look at those information in and put in a more didactical and uh, in a body of knowledge that we call spiritism. The Fox sisters, and more recent, Edgar Case, um, if you have been in Virginia Beach, I've been there a couple of times, there is an institute over there, an institute of Edgar Case that has all the work from Edgar Case. He is, is known by, Paula, correct me, the sleep prophet, right? The sleep prophet, right? He used, what is that? Is, is, <laughs> yeah, sleeping, sleeping pro, prophet, prophet. He used to, um, he also was a very successful medium, sonambulist medium, and he brought a lot of uh, information, right, rating, and also performs a lot of um, healing as well, right? So this is to show that this idea, when we talk about the information brought by the spirit during the mid of 19th century was not new. This information exists throughout humanity. What Kardec did is just compile in a way that become more, um, how to say, easy to follow these teachings, right? And there is many more. Okay, now let's go back to the how Kardec put this um, work together. So we already mentioned that the Spirit's book was published in 18, uh, April 18, 1857. So it was one year after he realized how much, how much material he had in his hand. So the Spirit of Truth told him, look, now you need to put this together in a way and you need to expose himself. He was not Alain Kardec in that time. His name was Hippolyte Leon Denizar Rivaio. He was an educator. His main, con uh, Kardec was 50 years old when he, you know, started to investigate this phenomenon. His main, main um, object in life was education. He wanted to change and he published book in, uh, related to the educational system in Paris, right? Until he came across this, those phenomena, and he decided to put, you know, um, his time on investigating this phenomenon. So, the Spirit's book is the backbone, was published, has uh, 1,019 questions. Think about a question over there in your mind. Okay, you don't need to tell me. There is a question that Kardec asked in the book, and you're gonna see the answer. Of course, we need to think, we need to think this way. Um, all the answer that is in the book was given by a spirit that is more evolved than, the, than us, right? You may ask, how can I trust this? Maybe the spirit that gave the answer was a pseudo, or a pseudo, uh, uh, not a, a, a pseudo spirit, something like that, right? It was a spirit that, you know, is just like true. Um, that's not true what they say. So the idea here is like, let's think about school, right? So when we go to school, we have teachers that are more advanced than us in terms of intellectual knowledge, right? So if you think about the spirit that brought this, they are not perfect. 
they are not perfect like you know but they are spirit that has more advanced in moral and intellectual all they they uh they acquire those when they are still living here that's why in the introduction you have the name of the group of spirits that helping to bring the answers from Santa Augustine, Fenelon, you know, some astronomers here in the US, we have Benjamin Franklin who was one of the contributors, some of those apostles. So we have spirit that has demonstrate and has acquired in terms of morality, a level that we are still struggling. Just for us to picture that, right? So inside of the spirit book is organized in a way that is divided in four parts. The first part Kardec put the first cause, right? In, in um, the first cause um, of the universe, right? And there we're gonna study about what is God, the attribute of God, uh, the creation, you know. Um, the second book, and so, so this first book, the first cause, is further developed in a genus. So the genus is a more uh, depth uh, information about the first part of the spirit's book. The second part talk about the spirit world, world and the world of spirit. And this was further developed in the medium's book. Um, the third part is the moral laws that was further developed in the gospel course to spiritism that contain um, pretty much the teachings from Jesus, from the gospel. And the fourth part talks about hopes and consolation, and we can see this in the heaven and hell, right? I know that the title sometimes can scare people, heaven and hell, what is that? But this book, we just studied this book like five years ago, right, Leo? And it's awesome, because here, we can have an idea um, what happened after we cross to the other side. Good and not so good. I'm not gonna say bad. I'm just say good, not so good. Hell, not so hell, right? Um, based on how we have lived our life. Just to give an idea. So of course, it's just this is just like a review about how the spiritual teaching what was put together. Now, one of the things that is important in spiritism is this that we call the universal control of the spiritist principle. What is this, Daniel? So it's like spiritism does not come and say, I have the truth. The truth is based in the universal control of the teachings of the spirit. So can you be more specific, Daniel? Yes. Let's see how it is that. So when Kardec put this together, one thing that he observed in the methodology that he used is like, okay, if you go to a house and meet with certain media and do this, the, the meetings, get some answer. So he submit the same question to different groups of mediums. He collect the answer and then he adopt those that was pretty much similar, right? So this teaching, the universal control of the spiritual teaching is spread from pole to pole. So he sent a lot of letters to here to the US, in Europe, and when he received those letters with the same question, this is the methodology, methodology that he used, he compiled those that were similar. So that was in a way to uh, make sure that the spirit that was behind those answers, they are in the same level, right? It's like if you, in a school system, uh, you're not gonna, if you ask a question for a class, a, a class that has a student that is very devoted, if you give a test, the expectation is that they do well in that test, right? So we can see that those students are in the same level of intellectual development. So also, these teaching are brought through many different mediums I just mentioned. It does not depend of one person, only one person. So it's a group of spirit that is bringing this information. This is very important because uh, for, if we study Jesus' life, one of the things that he said before he 
leave for sure the you know the environment the, the earthly environment is that he will go but he will send a promise consoler he never said but he said like this the promise consoler is going to stay forever and in his and i'm paraphrase here in his um um in his the way he said this to the disciples to the the followers is that um that we're gonna recognize this promise consoler because they they're gonna be everywhere at the same time so when we look at what jesus said and by studying these teachings that the spirit has brought to us and we spirits believe that there is um, one communication the gospel that the spirit didn't reveal his name or her name but just said the spirit of truth we believe that that message maybe is a message from our master Jesus, right? But it's not important to know who is the message from. It's the content of that message, how much that message can impact our life and can help us to become a better person. There is no nationality. So um, anyone can, you know, can claim themselves spiritists without, oh, I mean, spiritists from Brazil, I mean, spiritists from the US. No, there is no spiritists from Brazil. There is only spiritism. Anywhere that you adopt this teaching, we, um, we, we can claim, you can call yourself spiritist. It does not, okay, that's very important. It does not stem from any known religion. So when you look at the, for the spiritism, we're going to see that a lot of information we see, we can see in other religion, a little bit here, a little bit there, but not condense it in a single place as we have in the spirit, um, the spirit's teachings. No social class, anyone, you know, anyone is invited to study, to learn, to participate. And this teaching has been given gradually by enlightened spirits. One of the things that Kardec was, um, that we find in, in, in especially, especially in, in the Genesis, um, the, the last chapter of the Genesis, he mentioned about that spiritism is progressive. That, you know, although we have the foundation, the codification, so this teaching will evolve, right? And we know that after this teaching was brought to Brazil and with the work of Francisco Cândido Xavier, we have more like hundreds of books that extend the information. We have the collection of Andrea Luiz, we have a manual collection, we have a lot of information that talk about, you know, life after life and the interaction and what happens. So corroborating with what with Kardec has put together in the, on the codification. Now, the main principle of spiritism, we have several, but uh, the main one is five, that is the foundation of this principle. The first one is the existence of God. We cannot even start a conversation in spiritism if you don't believe that there is a supreme intelligence, the first cause of all things right and that's the first question of this first book this doctrine starts with the first question what is god not who is what is what is right and the answer is god is the supreme intelligence the first cause of all things it's not a person it's not it she he it's something that is beyond our comprehension and if the universe is a creation of God, God cannot be inside of the universe. He's outside of the universe, right? It's like the paint. If I paint, you know, a beautiful landscape, I'm the painter, so I'm not the, the paint, right? So that's the analogy. Second, the mortality of the soul. We are talking here about the existence of the spirit. There is a spiritual intelligence in the creation. There is the creation that has two main elements, the spiritual intelligence principle, material principle. 
So the intelligence principle, intelligence principle evolved to different kingdom until human kingdom, angelical kingdom, perfect spirit, right? Material principle evolved um, by transformation. We will end up in solid, visible matter, right? So we have been studying this for those that has been studied on Thursday. We have been studying the genus. So we have been going through those uh, information about the, the elements of the universe. God is outside of that, right? We cannot put God inside of the universe. Although we may, in a philosophical way, we can say that the universe is the breath of God, that, the uni that God is everywhere, right? We can say that because our limitation to understand about the creator is very small. We, we don't know. So, and let us just exercise our faith and believe that there is a supreme intelligence that are behind of all this that we, we see it, right? We are co-creator, but there is a supreme creator, a supreme intelligence that is God. So, this word reincarnation was not created by spiritism. Kardec didn't create reincarnation. Reincarnation has, is a belief that has been, you know, um, um, exist for, you know, um, thousands of years, right? So, but spiritism adopted that. That's the beauty of this teaching, is that we didn't, we, 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 we brought to the spiritual doctrine elements that really we help to understand the three questions that we ask. Who am I? Where I come from? And where are we going to go? That's the philosophical question. By read this, we have an idea what would be, you know, what, what is ahead? Where are we going to go, right? So reincarnation is an element that we cannot, is an element of this equation that we cannot take it out. If you take it out reincarnation, the plurality of the existence, then God is not going to be the supreme intelligence. So if you want a God to be good, the attribute of God, uh, good, uh, justice, love, so we cannot take it out reincarnation the, from the, the equation because when we look at the, you know, we as human beings in different classes, a different level of, um, aptitude, we may blame the creator, right? That the creator didn't create create things that's good and things that's bad, and that doesn't go well with, with the attribute of God. So we need to incorporate reincarnation, and Kardec incorporate that as a, one of the principle, the main principle of spiritism. The multitude of the inhabited planet, very important, because for us, the universe, Reflect what Jesus said. In my father kingdom, there are many mansions. So when we talk about the universe and the different galaxies and place, those are place, planets, that the spirit needs to continue the process of evolution. So once we graduate from the planet Earth, I don't know what not the next planet in the, but I mean, could be here in, the so in our solar system, could be another solar system, another galaxy. So we don't know, but let's do the best that we can. This is cool here, because our school now is the planet Earth, right? So the same thing that happened in our um, school system. So once we finish a grade, we go to the next one. Once we finish that school, we move to another school, right? To college, to university. So that's pretty much the universe is about, is for us to continue our process of evolution. In spiritism, evolution means the two wings of progress, intellectual and moral, okay? Um, the fifth one is the com communicability of the spirits. Pretty much we are talking about mediumship. So this is one of the, uh, the fifth principle. We have other principles in spiritism. We can add some other principles here, for example, free will, uh, forgetfulness of the past, like, you know, we all come, if we, if we have reincarnation, the next thing that, the next question that we may ask is like, oh, if I have a previous life, 
who who are mine the previous life right so that's why we have the mechanism of forgetfulness of the past and that was very well described in the book the gospel according to spiritism okay now i would like to ask a question we have 10 minutes to go the question is how can spiritism impact your life um leo do you have the mic <laughs> so leo has the mic over there if you wanted to share like no more than one minute just like in a very short sentence, if you wanted to share um, anything about, especially for those that has been here for many years, those that has been studying spirituals, but feel free. You wanna say something, Wendell, please? Yes, I think that spiritual teachings can help us to be more consolidated um, mm -hmm. through the, the issues of life offers. So I yeah. think we can, we, we don't get desperate. I mean, we, we understand that there is some reason for us to be facing that issue. So I think, oh, very I good think I've learned that uh, through spiritism. So spiritism, I'm gonna try to put it another way. You, you are trying, you're saying that spiritism, we may be afraid, but we don't panic, right? <laughs> right? We may be afraid. I'm afraid something is going to happen. You know, life is going to approach or this thing is, you know, but you don't panic, right? So that's the slight difference between, you know, uh, when we know. Leo, you want to say something? <laughs> it's now or never. Yeah, one minute. Anyone Last else? Last one minute. I would say responsibility, Daniel. Responsibility. Wow individual responsibility right individual responsibility right especially yeah <laughs> collective um, i agree with part with the part of your, your paula close to you, oh i know i always need coaching yeah i think there's something this is going to do to me um the three w's why am i here where did i come from where am i going to me that's a key and you talked about that that, that mm -hmm. i have a safety surrounding me i have a groundedness i can come up with some rationale when stuff happens and the other plus is being in this group that really loves discussing and going deeper very good thank you paula um for those that are online please type your comment you have one over there okay if you're online over there watching us please type you know your answer or comment go uh, ahead i was just i was just gonna say like it pretty much adding to what everybody says I agree entirely and I to me personally is acceptance acceptance so like the responsibility of course but acceptance with like the struggles and the, the hardships it's almost like the like self-consolation yeah, right like a, yeah that's it we're here for this <laughs> <laughs> no. okay very good thank you and I think I, I well for sure I have one from our dear friend uh, try to read here Carl he says, I'm just learning, but grateful for its inclusion. I am a Quaker, but the teachings have helped me see the world in greater love, a part of a continuity. Wow, thank you so much. Um, if you can share with us from where you are watching us, we he's, appreciate that. He's actually, he said earlier, so thank you for that. Uh, we're we're going to share at the end, but um he's from uh, chicago actually chicago that's what he said yes hello chicago <laughs> yes um yeah as you mentioned like spiritism has a lot of elements from all the other religion that we already have in humanity and the other philosophy so the difference is that was condensed in a in a way that we call the spirit codification and for example when we talk about the bible so is is this talk about you know christianity yes but when it comes to Christianity, uh, Kardec was very, um, very insightful, I would say. He didn't waste time with the controversy of Christianity. So he doesn't want to know if Mary was a virgin, if Jesus has many brothers or not. He wanted to extract the essence of Jesus' teachings, the moral teachings. So when we read this book, the gospel according to spiritism that talk pretty much about uh, the moral part of spiritism the guiding model is jesus and his example so talk about the parables about consolation about the healings but always looking 
uh, the human being as a um, as a intelligence being a, a part of the creation, but not go to what we we say we hu human beings has created or deviate with the teachings that he left, right? Because Jesus didn't didn't write didn't write anything, right? So we are the one that took the teaching. The gospel came about like 200, 300 years after him, right? The four gospels, like the, um, Mark, uh, Luke, John, and what's the other one? Matthew. Yeah. Leo. Daniel, one more uh, from Philip. Uh, I hope I'm pronounced this correctly. Gillett. He says, the feeling of connection with all those living and dead can be therapeutically comforting. Very, very important. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good reminder because uh, when we lose loved one, is a pain that we cannot even measure, right? If you lose your son or your husband, someone that you really love, it's very difficult to find consolation, like intellectual consolation, right? But a simple letter, a simple message in a mediumist meeting, or for example, if you see what happened in Brazil with Chico Xavier, the amount of letters that mothers received from their deceased sons and daughter, how, how consoling, you know, you have even a movie about that, right? Um, it's a pity that the movie is not in English, it's in Portuguese. But when you watch that movie, we, we cannot stop crying, even if, because each one of us has this experience, right? Uh, to lose a loved one. And this teaching bring a tremendous consolation in that area. Okay, so I'm gonna move on, okay? One, one more from Rob, one more? perhaps. Go ahead, Rob. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share uh, my the impact. Um, I w was thinking about basically organized infinity and that's sort of the universal mm -hmm. message of spiritism, I believe. And um, sort of the feeling that it's not necessarily, you know, what, what we call home, not necessarily our bodies or our residence or our nation or planet, even this uh, realization that the universe is our home and there's a, a supreme intelligence as we shared a spiritual intelligence. Wow. And so just being open up to that reality is uh, very consoling. Consoling, right? yes, absolutely. Yeah, Thank that's you. great. Gr good way, my ideas. You know, you said something very interesting that, you know, the universe has our home. That's very, very interesting. I think that's, that's is something that we need to incorporate in our life, like, especially when we feel sad, depressed, right? That, you know, we are not alone. We are not alone. Maybe we have a lonely life, but we need to understand that there is loved beings, the spirits that is always close to us, right? We just need to open our mind to connect with them. Thank you for sharing your, you know, how spirits can impact your life. So now, uh, just summarize how spirits impact our lives. Um, I put some bullet point here based on what we have studied. It helps us to understand our true nature, that we, we are spirit living in a physical body, temporary, that, you know, even when we lose a loved one, we, it's just the body that will die, we decompose, we continue living. So, and um, this true nature, um, by, you know, has just one life. It's like, we have just one life, and we, we have a life in the body. It's one life that has different, I would say internship, right? So we do an internship in the physical body, we come back home. Internship in the physical body, come back home. Internship as a woman, come back home. Internship as a man, come back home, right? We, 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 we experience internship as a rich person, home. As a poor, go back home. So in this process of multiple existence, we will evolve. So that's the process. That's why when we mention about reincarnation, is a piece of this equation 
the divine equation, that if we take it out, we have to admit that God is not just, right? Like, I mean, think logically. Why I'm suffering? Why I'm this way? Why I'm short, Leo? Why are you so tall, right? So what is God when he creates us, right? Why, you know, we ask all this. So that, that would not make sense if you remove reincarnation from this equation. But as a spiritist, we respect other people's belief. If there are people that doesn't believe, that's fine. We are brothers and sisters at the end of the day. Period. We have the same, you know, creator. So we should not, as a spiritist, we should not argue in a way that will try to prove who is who has the truth. Everybody has a piece of the truth, right? So I think that's the approach that spiritists teach us regard to we as a uh, human beings. It teaches the origin of your suffering and inequality. There is a chapter in this book, um, The Gospel According to Spiritism, chapter 5, talks about um, the present and past of our suffering. Beautiful chapter. It's the longest chapter of this book, right? For those that have been studied The Gospel According to Spiritism. So if you look something that the cause you cannot find in this present reincarnation, most likely come from the previous one, right? And here I wanted to just quote um, forgot your name. Agnes when she said about acceptance. That's very important. We need to accept who we are, our limitations, our um, uh, positive thing in our life, but also things that we still struggling. We need to accept but never stay stuck on that acceptance. Sin, uh, always be proactive to become better. Okay, so it's bring the certainty that we are not lost in the universe. Just what Rob just shared with us. So the universe is our home. Do you get lost in your home? Unless you have a big, huge mansion with like 300 bedroom, bathroom, you know, but the fact, and thank you for bringing that example, because the fact to bring the universe as our home give that sense of, like, be protected, okay? Although I'm suffering, but guess what? I have a home, right? When we do our prayer, what we do? We say, thank you for the ho for home, for this home. <laughs> thank you for my family, for the food that we have on the table. So if you call the universe home, change totally our perspective about the universe, right? It's confirm our immortality. Only the, the on, only matter decays, right? This is gonna decay. This body is gonna decay. It's gonna die. Everything changes, right? Not the spirit. We are moving toward a happy and perfect world. So when this is gonna happen? When God knows, depends on us. One of the things that this is a personal thing. Um, call my attention when I started to study spiritualism 25 years ago was that for the first time um, the responsibility was put on us. I don't need to go with all the respect, let me make a pair, all the respect, you know, I don't need to go to someone to be the middle man, right? Or the middle woman or the middle person between, you know, um, myself and the creator. And also, I learned that if you made a mistake, that is the law of action and reaction, you need to face the consequence. No matter how many prayers you're gonna do, and no matter how many, you know, promise you're gonna do, nobody's gonna take the consequence from you. You have to face it. So that is, is something that a uh, spiritual small always does not sugarcoat, sugarcoating, right? The straight to the point that is the law of cause and effect is a universal law. It is here in the planet Earth, it's the same in the other planets. It's a physical law, but also is a moral law. Finally, the last one, uh, this is the, uh, in the Spirit's book. Now, so the end, the end of our uh, conversation tonight is about how this teaching can influence in the progress, how spiritists influence on progress. So this is a 
question that Kardec asks, and I'm going to put the answer here, he says, the, not the Kardec. Kardec asked the question, the enlightened spirit answered. I'm going to I put like three bullet points for us to go to the answer. Spiritists can contribute to progress by destroying materialism and thus make human beings understand where they, the, the true interest lies. So we highlight destroying materialism. It's not like the word destroy. It's that pretty much call our attention that matter is not the end goal. Simple as that. Matter is not the end goal. Matter is the means that we utilize to progress, spiritual, spiritually speaking, right? So for those that put matter, the material things, as an end goal, as the most important of our life, so we can get stuck. Our suffering can be greater because if we become attached to something that will be destroyed, we are pretty much attach ourselves to fail, right? Because, you know, even the other day I was talking to a friend of mine about cars, right? A brand new car is so, they smell, doesn't make any noise. But from the day you buy that car and leave the car, the dealership, the car starts to decay, right? Literally. The day we are born, we already count the days that our body will not, we're not going to sustain the vital principle, right? It can eliminate doubts so that people will understand more clearly that they can that they can ensure the happiness of their future by their action in the present. So in another way, so law of cause and effect. Whatever we do today, if it is a good thing, will have a good impact in the future. If it is not so good, if it is a, not according to God's law, to the divine laws, we're going to be asked to redress that. Like, is that is G, the GPS, right? If you miss the exit in the highway, the GPS said recalculating. So we need to go back to that point that we, we to repair, to repair, yes. By destroying, the, so also the, the spiritism, teachers, um, this, uh, we influence the progress by destroying the, the prejudice of religion, social classes, and races. Uh, it's teaching humanity the great lessons of solidarity that will one day unite them as brothers and sisters, unite us, human beings, right? So pretty much this is uh, uh, just to summarize how spiritism can impact our lives, right? Um, for those that has not studied those, especially those five books of the codification, um, those books are available online, it's free. There is PDF in our website, you can download, you can buy the books in Amazon. So um, we have great numbers of books nowadays in English. Uh, so we have a lot of resources that you can take uh, advantage of that and learn more about spiritism. To finalize, I would say that the major objective of spiritism is, is to help humankind improve their moral and intellectual pro progression. So no matter what, what is happening in your life right now, you pass. This shall pass, right? Because whatever happened in the material environment has a deadline. What does not have a deadline is our end goal to perfection. So we are in that this journey to perfection, to become a, uh, say, pure spirit, if we can say. It's so difficult to talk about pure spirit if we are not pure. How can we talk about something that we don't know, right? It's like go to the middle of the Amazon forest and show a iPhone to someone that never left that place and ask what is this. The person's gonna look at it, gonna throw away because they don't know what it is. They even gonna run away because they don't know if it is harmful or not, right? So this is the message. I uh, will stop here for any comment and qu or question um, about um, this teaching. If I don't have the answer, 
no worries. We have tons of books here that you can read. I'm pretty sure you're going to find the answer in the, the codification here, right? Leo, any comment, question? Yeah, we have some comments here. Do you want to put on um, full yeah. screen there so I can share? Yeah, I can do it. Let me see. Uh, ooh. If anyone has any comments here that we would like to share or why not, I please let you us know. You can see me like infinite times, Leo, over there. I know. I, I'll, you just, I'll just select, just, yeah, no, no. No, the, not that one. No, no, the <laughs> one that is just me. <laughs> yes, perfect. All right. It, you see, yeah. You see, that's the that's the that's what happens when you're not back here. <laughs> so just some uh, showing some hellos from our dear friend uh, Carl that I mentioned earlier from uh, Chicago. And yep, um, Marisa Demello also saying hello. Um, Marisa. And uh, Kirsten also saying wonderful talk. Always great to remind <laughs> to be reminded of these ideas. And I'll start with her. She's the question that we have here thus far. And she asks, how can we remind ourselves daily about how much spiritism can truly help our lives? First way, put in press what we studied or life will remind us. You know, so it's very common uh, people, when people give testimony about how they become spiritists, I would say like, 90% you say, oh, I got to know spirituals because I, I was going through a very difficult time in my life. A tremendous mm -hmm. suffering, pain. So someone told me to go to a spirit center. This is one way that we are reminded about our true nature and how we can um, use this teaching to help ourselves. The other way is like when we start and don't put in practice, then life reminds us. Simple as that. Go ahead, Leo. Thus far, that's what we have online. Anyone here would like to? Wendell? Wendell, I'm going to call you to be here one day, man. <laughs> you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so talkative today. So. No, that's okay, man. It's, no, it's more a thought than a question. Yeah. So you went talking about perfection. So it, it reminded me about a question I asked last week mm -hmm. about uh, how to be motivated to be, to try to reach uh jesus models of perfections so as we are so far of his teaching so i was thinking that uh, spiritism says that all spirits are created in the exactly the same way mm -hmm. so so was jesus created yeah. as we were so he, he didn't have any privilege when he was created by god so i was thinking that that's a great teaching for us to be motivated because uh he had the same way of evolution that we are having so we we evolve as he did some someday at some point it may take a while it may take uh, so much mm -hmm. time but if you try uh we can get there so yes, I think that's, that's a good that one teach. and that's go toward one of the principle that i didn't mention that called free will so since we are create like simple and ignorant right and without when we say simple and ignorant without, without knowledge, without experience, right? And then by going to, you know, the multiple existence, we expose ourselves to different situations. And then we have what? The power to choose. We call this free will. The, the choice that we make, you know, will lead you to, to speed up your evolution or to delay a little bit. But I want to say something about your comment is that it is a process. It's nature doesn't jump, right? We are, we are in the winter now. We're not going to see when winter, the winter becomes uh, spring, right? Because the change is so gradually that we don't. That's, we, are, we are part of nature because we are nature in the sense that when we talk about the divine laws or natural laws, we are embedded in nature. So this change, even like the moral change, the spiritual change, will help so gradually that we even don't observe. Like few people in history gave like a big jump in their evolution. Like when we talk about Paul of Tarsus, for example, Mary of Magdalene. But those spirits they already have inside of them, they are in the their last, I would say, 
trial, life trial, right? And then they gave that jump that we become like, wow, what a evolution in one lifetime. But we don't know how was the life of um, Paul before he became life of soul that became Paul, but we don't know how was the previous reincarnation of that spirit, right? We say, and Kardec asked, question 625, what's the most perfect um, spirit that has been lived on us, that God has sent to us? And the answer was Jesus, right? And when we see Jesus, we tell that, we, we name that Jesus is the most perfect, but when we talking about if Jesus was a pure spirit, we we say that, right? We say that Jesus is pure because Jesus never told us that he's pure. He never told that was perfect. He came to deliver a message to us. We don't know. Maybe when we read the spirit's doctrine, we see that there is other Christ in the universe, right? That when he talk about his kingdom, if he has a kingdom, there is other Christ that has kingdoms as well. Right? I don't know his kingdom is the solar system. We don't know. Is the Milky Way? Is you know, so there is a lot of question. And the other question is like, let's talk about graduation, right? Do we stop to think, okay, did Jesus graduated here to become pure? Oh, he came already pure. So we learn in spirituals that he was already a pure spirit when he came to build our planet. He built our planet, helped to build our planet. He's the governor of the planet Earth not of the solar system. If we read the Spirit's book, we see that the solar system has other more evolved spirit that's ahead of Christ and so on, right? So this is like, if you wanted to learn more, come to our third group so we can discuss about that. Yeah, but thank you for the, the reminder about, you know, our model, guiding model is Jesus. If he was able to achieve that level, we also can, and he said, if you follow my teaching, you can do what I do and much more, right? Something like that. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. That was an excellent summary. And to assist Kirsten or myself in daily reflection, you could take a couple slides and create a mini poster. <laughs> um, what I just wanted to comment on was you were talking about Edgar Casey, which would involve a trip to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I also, since I like to travel, want to suggest Casadega in Florida and Lilydale in New York State mm. because they're both centers of spiritualism, which is as close as you're going to get to spiritism. Yeah. And, the, and the difference from what Tom Cratsley, I believe, taught us from Lilydale is that not all spiritualists believe in reincarnation, and there may be something with communication with spirits. Thank you for the comment, Paula. Yes, I've been in Lilydale twice, and it's a wonderful place to go, yeah. Any, any other question, comment? A, a quick question, Daniel, in, 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 in practical ways, if you can, please, because uh, I'll try to be brief. <laughs> but with the idea of responsibility, with the idea of, um, of consequences, right, action and reaction, and, and the, the, as you mentioned as well, that uh, whatever action we will have to bear the consequences, and I'm quite sure that spiritism does not. It's not, in, you know, bringing this to us in a punishing in way. Um, but many of us, and I will, including myself, have thought before of, you know, how difficult it is, right, for us to face ourselves, right, uh, when we think about that. Perhaps the reason I'm here today is because the, there was a cause, right. You know, a group of causes. If and and obviously, what's going to happen to us tomorrow, it is a consequence of all of this together. So, what would you say in terms of how to live a more harmonious life, as Agnes actually mentioned as well, to be in this harmony where we face ourselves, we face these difficulties of the past, the present, to build a better future through spiritism. Thank you, Leo, um, for the question. Um, the recipe, res, um, how do you say, <laughs> recipe, like the receipt. How do you say receipt in English? 
recipe the recipe is not mine the recipe is not mine <laughs> it's from saint augustine saint augustine right he he i think he was one of the spirit that helped to put this codification he was the saint augustine was the coordinator of this spirit's book he his last last question the answer is a long answer that was gave by him and one of the things that he invited us to do is like do this self-analysis, like, you know, before I go to bed, we need to look at how our day was and what we have done and make this evaluation. The evolution is individual, but we need one another to evolve. We only evolved in society. If you wanted to go by an island and cultivate a spiritual thing, you know, become more spiritual, elevate, you're going to be perfect very fast. The next day you are perfect spirit because there is nobody to interact. So you cannot check, you know, if you are your virtue because it's just you on the island, right? So this um, uh, evolution is individual, but we need to be in contact with others, especially others that are different than us. So they can test us our virtue or help us to build virtue, right? So self-evaluation, self-discover is the key so joanna judge has invited us to um, turn our mind in right the inner journey that is a cd that is a book about that uh, so that's the only way we need to know ourselves right so we may say oh yeah i never i will never do that we don't know if we're gonna be put in a situation that you know is asked for us to behave and to to put in press what we have studied, we may fail badly. We may fail badly, right? Because we say, oh, okay, we come here, talk here, and, and bring all this beautiful teaching, but the time of the test is the day-to-day -day in our society. It's the relationship with our boss, our colleague at work, you know, family members, you know, driving, <laughs> especially in driving, right? So it's this time that we need to um, go through and then before go to bed and then we do evaluation. That's the practical way, Leo, that comes to my mind. So we should not also push too much in ourselves so we cannot feel like live a life of guilt, of fear. We are not here for that. If you, if you feel too guilty or too fearful, then it's gonna be a problem for us to exercise and to build Issues because we're gonna put ourselves. Who am I? I'm little. You know, I cannot do this because I commit that mistake. You are son of God. We are daughter of God. So that's fine. You made a wrong turn. Let's go back. Recalculating, right? The GPS. Recalculate. Let's go back and 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 get back back to track. And for this, this teaching help us. You know. Especially the series of uh, Joanna Jungley, the psychological series, um, help us to face our shadows, our dark place, and and continue, not not stagnate, right? Oh, I can see everybody here. I guess Leo, we are done, right? One more, more. comment, Rob, please. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh you're done. <laughs> So for those that are online, thank you so much for following us and uh, share the video um, and, you know, um, forgive my accent, strong, have accent, but my wife said that's beautiful. So for that, I feel so, doesn't matter whatever you think about my accent, <laughs> about my pronunciation, is it is, um, it is your opinion and I respect, right? So thank you so much. Thank everyone. I guess right now we're going to... Um, um, stop the live stream. We're going to go to our passes. Um, thank everyone. I invite you to continue to study this 